Hello, my Periscope family. How are you? I'm Helen Sally, your Destiny Heifer. I'm glad to come before you, answering your questions once again. Thank you so much for continuing to write me and email me and sending me your comments and your questions, and also for commenting on my YouTube page. And I thank you for subscribing also to my YouTube page and liking and sharing the page with your friends or those who may need the information that is on this video. And I appreciate so much those of you who are being strength, strengthened and comforted by the v videos. It's always exciting to hear how you are being thoroughly blessed. Keep listening to the videos and they will keep get you and they will keep strengthening you and you will get stronger and stronger and stronger. And that's what you want to do to discover your authentic self, your original self, your most powerful self. All right, then one of the questions I'm going to answer for you on this beautiful morning here in the great metropolis of Seattle. Um, I want to answer the question um, they asking, many of you are asking about the narcissist. You know, how do they think? Why do they think like this? What, what is on their mind? How can someone say they love you and treat you like this? I want to go into the mind of the narcissist. Let's go into the closet. The closet is a space that you don't let people in. It's a place that you put your most valuable things. It's a place you put things that you like. You hang them in your closet. In your closet, you don't let everyone in your closet. You don't allow everyone in your closet. Only specific people goes in your closet. When you have friends, they don't come in your closet. Most friends stay downstairs or come upstairs into an area that you have set aside for them to visit and to enjoy themselves. But there are personal uh, rooms in the house that is not open to the public and the public is not invited into your house. One of those areas is your closet. You don't allow everyone into your closet space. And some of us, like if you got a lot of clothes, a lot of shoes, you don't want them to know how many clothes and shoes you have unless you take them on a tour. Very rarely do we tour people in our closet. We're going to go in the closet of the narcissist, which is the mind of the narcissist, inside of the mind, inside of the thoughts. How do the narcissist think? The narcissist is an individual. They usually have nine traits. I want to read these traits off to you so that you may know what they are. These are the nine traits of a narcissist. Trait number one, a narcissist has an exaggerated sense of self importance. Look at his value. This is his value system. His importance doesn't go out. It goes in. So his importance is always inside. Never forget that. No matter what he says, no matter what he does, the narcissist's first and number one priority is his sense of self. Remember self, important, just in case you feel that you're not. Number two, the narcissist believe that they are special. They're unique. They believe that there's no one like them in the earth, which is true, but it's over-exaggerated. And we know that we are unique in our structure. Even twins can have a different fingerprint. We all have our uniqueness, but the narcissist has a specialty in their uniqueness. They are value above regular people. There's no one that can even be remotely compared to them. Narcissist. Number three. The narcissist require excessive admiration, excessive. And sometimes we get lost in that because we think just because they are requiring excessive admiration that they are actually showing us attention because the narcissist is like a child. The child would throw a tantrum and fall on the floor and start to cry. And what the parent do, rush to the child to see what's wrong. There's nothing wrong with the child. They want attention. But the narcissist requires excessive 
attention because remember they're self-importance. They believe that they are special above everyone else with no comparative analysis. And the narcissist requires excessive admiration. If you notice the word, it's always grandeur, excessive, great, massive when it comes to the narcissist. This is not your normal human element. And you will often get in much trouble if you put it on a normal human element. And when you deal with the narcissist, you will notice it's not normal. Everything they do, it's not normal. From sexuality to frustration to rage, it's not normal. Number four, a narcissist has a sense of entitlement and vigorous lies, constant lies, feels of lies is your narcissist. Self-importance, number one, believe that they're excessively, extremely unique, requires excessive attention, and has a sense of entitlement. You owe them. They don't owe you. You are privileged to have them in your life. They are not privileged to have you because you are common people and they are not. They're unique people and you should be so glad that they paid attention to you because they could be somewhere else with somebody else who would throw themselves at their feet. A lot of times they're right. Number five, a narcissist lack empathy. Why don't you feel anything? Don't you know that I'm hurting? Yes, they do. And no, they don't care if it doesn't cater to their sense of importance. If they are not getting your attention, we'll let everybody cry. The narcissist cares about themselves. And when they care about you, it's because it's about them. That's why they care. Number six, a narcissist is envious of others and believe others are envious of them. The narcissists feel like everybody is envious of their greatness, of their power, of their beauty, of their sexuality, that they, nobody can compare to them. They can't meet the standards, so they're jealous. So when people fight against them, it's because they're jealous. When people come up against them, it's because they're jealous. The only reason you're fighting me is because you're jealous. You want to be me. God has made me so special until there's nobody in my ranking order. That's why I should have what I want. And you remember entitlement? You should be privileged. You better treat me right or I'll go get a new supply. Hmm. Number seven. A narcissist behaves in an arrogant and haughty manner. Well, if you have a sense of entitlement, who are you to argue with me? Who are you to come up against me? Who are you to tell me no to something I want? If I want your money, I want your body, I want your child, I will have them. I will have them and I will enjoy them. And if you get jealous, that is just you. Because when I come in your life, says the narcissist, everything you own belongs to me. It is no longer yours. And the moment it's due, it does. I'll leave. I will go and get a new supply who will understand who I am, who will enjoy me, who will treat me like the wonderful person I am. God made me special, and you are too blind to see that. I'm leaving. Mm. Number eight. A narcissist is preoccupied with the fantasies of success and, and the perfect mate. You mean the narcissist dream of a perfect mate? The narcissist don't want to be alone. Only losers are by themselves. The narcissist wants somebody that wants somebody. Because everybody's grand. 
everybody wonderful, have somebody. So why leave myself out? I am the best thing walking, the best thing breathing. I am God's gift to women. I am God's gift to men. They will be glad to have me. And they live in this world that they fantasize. They fantasize by their success. Everything they do is successful. Even if it failed, it failed because you did it. You are jealous of me. I can't succeed at nothing. You are cursing me. You are like a witch. You are jealous of me. You don't want me to have any fun. You don't want me to grow. You don't want me to be successful. I'm doing everything I can. Even if it's staying home, let you work. I'm cleaning up the house. Even when you come home and find the house dirty, I I was tired. My back ate. My head ate. And then if I go out and I'm very successful, I am going out and I am paying the bills. And that may be true for some of them. They pay the bills because some of them are responsible to the point where they pay the bills because they need a place to stay too. And they are bragging on the house that you're living in too. It's just you happen to be here because you have my children and I'm married to you. So I'm going to pay the bills so I can bring my friends and my coworkers to our beautiful house. And they will praise me. They will brag on me. Make sure you keep it clean. I may even get a maid for you. Or I may let you clean it and have the privilege of being tired because you're serving me. The narcissist and their fantasy, when everything go wrong, they see everything goes right. When the bills are not paid, it's your fault. It's your fault I didn't pay the bill. If you hadn't have stressed me out, I would have been there on time. If you had a gave me love and you're like, I'm, I give you every time. I never sexually deny you. You are a liar. You denied me. I tried to touch you and you didn't roll over. When did you try to touch me? I was asleep. You should wake up. When I touch you, you should give to me. You're very insensitive. You're impervious to my feelings. I'm leaving. Hmm. Number nine. The narcissist takes advantage of others because they are extremely jealous. How did you get that? How did you get to be successful when that was mine? I'm supposed to have that, and you got it. How did you get it? You stole from me, you crook, you liar. I gave you my everything. I spent time with you, and you have worked. You have went to school. You earned your degrees. You worked your hours, and you work long hours, so you can get extra things. How dare you take my praise? They're praising you. That's mine. Goes to a party. It's not even his birthday. It's the friend's birthday. How dare they show her all of that attention? She is beneath me. She's nothing. He is not a friend. He's a traitor. He's stealing my attention. Excessive admiration. I need it. I got to have it. It's in my person. And it belongs to me. I know what I'll do. I'll disrupt. I will scream. Why? What did I do? Everybody look. Why are you saying that to me? You're looking like, I didn't say anything. What? You want to do what? How dare you when I love you and I care for you. I give you everything. I work hard to give you everything. Smear campaign. I got to get some attention. I give you everything. You are never, ever satisfied. Even though I work 12 to 14 hours, 16 hours, you want to dress, I buy it. That's okay. Here they come. What's the matter, Max? I give her everything. I give her everything. I don't know why she's not happy. And you are looking like, what? What happened here? And they are looking at you like, you low-down scoundrel. You got one what? You got the best man in the world, best woman in the world. If God 
that have gave me this. I will be happy. And in her mind, she said, I wish she had a gave you that. And he's saying, she is never satisfied. The birthday boy is comforting the narcissist. Everybody has left the birthday boy. They left the narcissist. And the narcissist is getting excessive attention because I'm entitled. That attention was mine. His birthday, when I show up, mine. They are occupied with her. The ladies pull her in the kitchen. What's wrong with you? And you said, I don't know what happened. I didn't even say nothing. And they said, you don't have to lie. He's really hurt. We saw the hurt in his eyes. Why are you lying? Cindy, I never knew you to lie. I never known you to lie. I'm not lying. I was just standing there. And he came and started hollering. Sure, Cindy. Let us enjoy his birthday. This is Mel's birthday. And Charles, Charles is hurt. And now Mel can't enjoy his birthday. We're going back in there to enjoy his birthday. But instead of Mel in the birthday, everyone was centered around Charles. Even Mel. And then all the attention keeps going. And Mel started noticing. Hint. Charles is getting all the attention. But if Mel interrupt right now, he's going to look very bad and very awkward because Charles got hurt. So they're saying, come on, Mel, come over here with Charles. It turns to Mel's birthday on Charles' day. He gets in the car and the wife looks at him. He said, you low down lying scandal. Why would you do that? What are you talking about? What are you talking about now? Now, why are you jumping on me? Because you lied. I didn't say anything to you. You're saying something now. Forget about the party. You're harassing me now. They never get to the point. Because in the mind of a narcissist, I will have my way. In my time, every opportunity I get. And you will concur on my time. It belongs to me and I will have it. I won't let anybody spoil my party. And you're saying that wasn't your party. That was male party. Every party I go to becomes my party. Just like you. You are mine. And don't you forget that. Why? Because I have an exaggerated sense of importance. I have to be number one. And I will be number one. At the expense of your mind. At the expense of your heart. At the expense of your family. See? At the expense of your friends. Ring, ring. Hello. How is Charles? Is he doing okay? Charles is fine. Why did you say it like that? He's already been hurt. Haven't you have enough? No problem. I hope he's fine. I didn't know you were like that. You really hurt him. I didn't hurt him. I didn't say anything. You did. And now I see how you are. Separation of friends. Because Charles has an exaggerated sense of importance. Friends, alienation. Start from the point. You take away his importance. Number two, look at Charles. Charles believe that they're special. They're unique. But Mel was getting all of the attention. He had to take that away. Because nobody is going to bring Charles in their house and ignore him. 
the baby with the temper tantrum falls out in the floor until somebody hear me. When I cause enough disturbance, when I disturb everything you thought was your peace, you will have to give me the attention. I will get it one way or another. Why? Because I am unique and I need that admiration. Everybody admires me. I am God. And God will not be ignored. Worship me. So everybody get around the narcissist. And before you know it, they are the life of the party. They are the face of the party. And they are the laugh of the party. And I mean, bring it on, guys. All for y'all. That's what they remember. They forget they were your best friend. Because Charles' persuasion take up every atom, proton, neutron, neutron in the room. And there's nothing left but the air of Charles. What happened here? A narcissist feel that sense of entitlement. Remember I was telling you that? They are entitled from the friend and from you. As you ride home, you are so angry. And Charles, babe, he put on the best cologne. He lights the candle. There's peaches in the refrigerator. He cuts them. And he brings it to you. Because Charles knows what he did. He looks in your eyes and says, sometimes I'm a bad boy. I don't even know why you love me. I just know I love you so much. Can't do without you. You're my everything. Even when I'm crazy. And baby, sometimes I get real crazy. Boom. A peach in the mouth. He should pour champagne. He pours apple cider. He pours your favorite drink. And you drink it. And that night, it was 4th of July. Charles get up, he showers, goes to work. Gets in his car and crank up. And pat himself on the shoulder. And he says, tonight I'm going to give her hell. Because she thought she got me in a corner. She thought. She won. Nothing she do would satisfy me. Bling, bling. Charles phone. Because it was such a wonderful night. I want to tell him how wonderful he was. He don't want to hear. He don't answer his phone. He don't come right home. He goes over to Mel's house. And he's there with Mel's wife. He's praising him while Mel's at work. And Charles just thank her. For being there. He hugs her. Some kind of way. And he looks at her. And say. You know. I hope Mel appreciate you. Because a woman like you. You're hard to find. And she looks in his eyes. Because Charles is handsome. Well dressed. Smells good. Boom. He goes off to work. Mel come home. And his wife is thinking, you need to appreciate me. He's trying to figure where that come from. When we had such an awesome night, she's no longer satisfied. She calls Cynthia, talks to Cynthia. Because Charles is there. She comes over to Cynthia because Charles is there. And Charles shows no empathy. Cynthia, do you want a drink? Would you like something to drink? Well, I guess he brings her something to drink. Oh, babe, I'm sorry. I forgot about you. It's okay. Thanks for forgiving me for being so terrible last night. You wasn't terrible last night. Oh, I was. I hurt her. 
and I don't want to hurt her again. How dare you, Cynthia, make him feel bad? That's okay. She's all right. And they too divide because Charles has a plan. And Mel's wife can't get Charles out of her mind. And Charles makes sure she sees him. He laughs with Mel. Mel's back is turned to his wife. But her face is turned to Charles' eyes. He winks. He leaves. He feeds the beast that is rising up in her. Because Charles is envious that Mel has a beautiful wife. He needs new supply because his wife is under devaluation. She has him in his mind. He knows who he is. He knows that if he stays around, he will affect her mind. He will affect her hormonal system. He will affect her dreams. He will affect her desires. When the narcissists come around and they start affecting you, what you have now no longer satisfy you because the beast in you want to bite at the temptation. But Charles won't let it happen right away. He feeds it till it grows and he knows when she's ready. And it happens. And the guilt is what he used. Because Charles behaved arrogantly and heartily. And he uses her. And he said, what was your friend's name? You tell me before I tell Mel. He got her whole regime that was at that party in his hand. Because he is getting ready to discard his wife. She's main supply. He'll come back. But he need a smear campaign. Because don't you ever embarrass me in public again. If I say you did something, you own up to it. And it happened. He leaves. But to none of the circle, he leaves. For Mel. Because he picked up. On Mel. And he got Mel. And he leaves Mel. And he leaves and get a new supply. And then he hoovers. His wife. And she thinks. I've been a bad girl. I will never do that again. The narcissist. His number one factor exaggerated sense of self-importance. When you lose who you are, you become what he wants. When you gain who you are, you cause an injury and he will never break down your defense system. Wounded you? Yes. Hurt you? Yes. Lied? Yes. Triangulate you? Yes. Gaslight? Yes. Devaluated? Yes. But you didn't break. And when the opportunity comes, the animal in the cage, he thought, has escaped. No. The woman or the man came to their true, authentic self. And they left. hope you enjoyed this video. Share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. It is a pleasure always to come to you because you are really awesome. Don't forget to subscribe and write me destiny12s at gmail.com If you are interested in sessions with me, write me. Make sure you leave your number and your name. I am Helen Sattler, your destiny helper. See you on the next video.